Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Mess. So, Tarkin and Ding series emulation night school where I talk about some of the best emulators out there and show you how to set them up on your own PC so you can start having fun soon. Because last week I did a video on the updates to Azahar, the continuation of Citra and 3DS emulation. We're going to be doing an Azahar tutorial today. Before you get to find involved though, do me a huge favor down below, hit like and subscribe and ring that notification bell. Definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we have a Patreon link down below as well. And again, if you need custom help via chat, there is a $10 Patreon tier where you get my support, but if you pay attention to the video, I don't think anyone will need that. And I can't stress enough, and I like to say this in every tutorial, please don't skip around. I do not put chapters in here because I want you to watch it from start to finish so that you have a full understanding of how everything works. If you jump around, more often than not, someone leaves a comment asking how to do something and I just give them a timestamp. But if you pay attention to the tutorial, you'll be playing 3DS on your PC as well. There are multiple steps, and there's a couple different versions of Azahar that do different things, so we're going to be going over all of those in the video talking about how to set the emulator up all the different diverse video settings controller bindings and everything else you need to have a good time and trust me 3ds emulation is getting better and it's great to see that it is continuing from citra now if you go to the azahar website you'll see here the basic information there's also going to be a download page on the website as well but this is just basically a fork of citra and lime 3ds and if citra sounds familiar that was the name of the actual 3ds emulator before the team got into it a little bit with Nintendo but this does exist it does work and we're going to be talking about it today now I want you to be aware that there's two different versions of Azahar and we're going to go over the second one in just a moment because some load up files that the other ones do not but if we take a look here you'll see the download button for Windows Android Linux and Mac OS this 3DS emulation tutorial is predicated off the Windows version of Azahar, but all the details will basically work for all the builds. And there is an additional fork called Azahar Plus, which will allow for loading up some different files. I'm not going to go into that too much for very specific reasons, but just be aware that there are two builds of Azahar, Azahar and Azahar Plus, and they basically do the same thing. So when you actually download this, it's not going to be an unzip, it's actually going to be an executable. And even though I've checked it and can say it's safe, you should always scan these things whatever virus scan you want before you install anything you see on any tutorial. From there, it's going to be a simple installation process, just like any other application on your PC. You'll just go ahead and select the options. You can create a desktop shortcut if you want. Definitely recommend that, and it's just going to install into your program files. This is going to get the entirety of Azahar installed and ready to start running, but of course we still need to set everything up, because there's a lot of different diverse options, both on the controls, the touchscreen component, as well as all of the different graphical enhancements you can run. So we're going to be going over how to get the games launching first, all of the different settings you can articulate, how to get your controls bound, especially if you're using a controller on Windows, and then how to go ahead and do a lot of the other performance tricks and other emulation for touch. But it's one of those things, once you get this set up, for the most part, it's going to run pretty flawlessly, but it is system to system dependent. I have an i9-12900K with a 3080 Ti, so the performance I'm getting here is indicative of those specifications. And you'll see that some files are not supported on Azahar that would be supported on Azahar Plus. But if you go up here, to file you're just going to get an option to go ahead and load a file it doesn't automatically accept dot 3ds files but if you just hit all files you'll see here that you do end up seeing them and so long as they are the right file set you're going to be able to launch them perfectly fine so all you do is double click on the game and you'll be into the actual 3ds game in and of itself it does do a little pre-compilation and it's one of those things it will help out but you're still going to see some hitches when you actually go through different shader compilation at least the first time the game is actually going to compile that because most 3ds games really just use that top screen for the gameplay you can go over to single screen and get it larger but here's a sample of how the emulation is in sound go ahead and list for 45 seconds i'll come back and talk about how to get this all set up even further
use that soundtrack sample is a little bit of a trick because you want to look and see if a game's going to run because Mirrors of Fate sounds great and looks great, but it does not actually control well whatsoever. Now, if we go into the emulator configuration, we're going to go over all of the different diverse options here. For the most part, in general, you can leave everything the way you want it to. You can adjust the emulation speed, but I honestly don't have any much of a reason to do that. And as far as debug and UI, those are also options that you can kind of just leave completely alone and you don't really need to worry about anything whatsoever. That's what's going to pop up first. You can play around with it if you want to, but otherwise you'll see here if we go into the system it's going to be grayed out if a game's actively running again for the most part you can just leave that completely as is now the internal rendering resolution this is going to be that upscale it's going to render at a higher native rate than what the 3ds actually would render internally you can adjust that up and down while the game is running and that's how you're going to see better or worse performance additionally there's post-processing shaders i leave those completely alone you can do stereoscopic 3d as well if you have the right model or if you have active glasses you'll do that in this options menu right here but otherwise again that's something that i really just don't mess around with too much but it is fully featured and you can get 3d support out of the emulator it's one of the things i never actually use it but if you want to you can go ahead and do whatever makes you happy and as far as when i showed you how to load up a file you can do that from anywhere on your system there is no dedicated folder for azahar and the games just go ahead and pop them wherever you want you also have that view option at the top menu but you can change the view screens around as well in the actual emulation control configuration, including doing custom layouts, but for the most part I would say 9 out of every 10 3DS games are just going to use that top screen. Something like Captain Toad Treasure Tracker here, I don't even remember ever looking at the bottom screen when I played it, so if really you just want that big primary screen to be able to play the game, and it's one of those things. Your performance is definitely going to vary. You have two different renderers, and we're going to go over each of those. Some games are going to show better or worse performance depending on which renderer you use, so I'll show you how to toggle that option. Just be aware that you cannot change the backend renderer while a game is running, you're going to have to exit out of the game and not have any content actually executing so that you can change that render and then jump back into the game. It's one of the settings that you can't switch on the fly. So if we go back into the actual configuration menu again without a game running, you'll see here we have the Vulkan renderer, we have software, which honestly you probably don't want, and then we have OpenGL. Go ahead and switch these back and forth depending on what game you're playing and what performance you're getting. You can also enable asynchronous shader compilation, so as opposed to having stutters, you'll get graphical glitches, but you won't have the hitches in the game. This is up to you. It is a subjective situation. If you like visual glitches more than a stutter now and again, you can do that. If not it is disabled by default and that's where i leave it and as far as the audio is concerned i don't touch this whatsoever the audio works or doesn't work now, as far as the controls are concerned, this is where you're going to configure them in the controls option. I'm using an Xbox Series X controller right here, and it automatically intelligently binds itself to the buttons that things will work best, but you can reconfigure anything you want. And if you make any sort of mistakes, there is an auto map button on the bottom as well. If you click that, you'll be fine. But on motion and touch, by default, it's going to be configured to your mouse. And that's exactly what you want to use. If you're on PC, Steam Deck, or otherwise, the mouse cursor and your mouse click will go ahead and tap that touch screen like you would on a real 3DS, it just does it virtually, and you can even change the sensitivity, but honestly, I haven't really seen much of a need for that. So you'll see here with that mouse cursor going over the actual selection, some games only allow you to use the touch screen and do not have button input, so you have to use touch. That's where you're going to use the view and go to the dual screen, go ahead and select any options you need on the touch menu, and once you're actually back into the game, you can go ahead and switch back to the big single screen, and you'll be ready to play whatever content you want. Because it's one of those things, some 3DS games just insist on using touch as a functionality and don't allow you to basically press a button to get past that, which absolutely sucks if you have a 3DS that has touchscreen issues because it can actually render some games almost unplayable. And again, in this option here, if you just hit auto map, if your controller is not automatically mapped, you make a mistake, it'll set itself back to the defaults. And again, in my experience with Azahar trying different controllers out, every single controller I plugged in was automatically mapped to the way I would personally map it. But if you want to change any settings here, you just click that button go ahead and push the button you'd like on the corresponding controller and everything will be fine and you can clear everything and auto map it again if you want to the only other thing i recommend is going into controls under hotkeys i like the audio volume up and down button assigned to the up arrow and down arrow on my keyboard so i can adjust volume because not every single game has the same volume and for some reason quick saving and quick loading isn't yet bound to a hotkey so i go ahead to assign those as well because quick saves and quick loads save states 
in general are definitely something you want on emulation for sure. But if you follow this entire tutorial, you install as a hard like I showed you, you go ahead and open up your games, go through the settings menu, make sure you have everything configured to touchscreen support, and go ahead and bind your controller, you'll be playing a ton of 3DS games. But before you spend time doing it, you should always look up the game that you want to play and make sure it works under emulation. But that's basically how you do it. If you have any questions or comments, I'll leave them down below. Hopefully this tutorial was useful, but trust me, this one is relatively easy. You'll load the game, you configure it, and you're off to the races. But I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.